What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Dan Tam Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, July 7th, 2017. Learning some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Answer Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com, or yeah iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. War Brothers Pictures has released a new action-packed one-minute trailer for its upcoming World War II epic, Dunkirk. She'll fight on the beaches, she'll fight on the landing grounds, she'll fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall never surrender. A voice can be heard saying of Britain and its allies as various harrowing skirmishes appears on the screen and ticking sounds create tensions in the background. Tickets for the 70 millimeter engagements of the thriller went on sale Wednesday, two days prior to when tickets become available for regular screening of the film. This wide release of Dunkirk in 70mm will be the widest in the format in 25 years. Starring Tom Hardy, Harry Styles, Kenneth Brannon, Mark Ray Lance, and Cillian Murphy, the movie is due out in theaters July 21st. Director Christopher Nolan said in a statement, I've been a longtime proponent of the film, particularly the IMAX film format, as a storytelling medium. The immersive quality of the image is second to none, drawing the audience into the action in the most intense way possible. Organizers of the New York Film Festival said Thursday they have chosen a feature to be the festival centerpiece selection. The event's Facebook page announced Todd Haynes' enchanting, lovingly intricate tribute to the power of obsession, Wonderstruck, as a centerpiece selection at the 55th hashtag NYFF. Starring Julianne Moore and Michelle Williams, the drama will have its New York premiere at the Alice Tully Hall on October 7th. It previously screened this spring at the Cannes Film Festival in France and will be released theatrically by Amazon Studios and Roadside Attractions in the United States on October 20th. The New York Film Festival Director and Selection Committee Chair Kent Jones said in a statement Thursday, Todd Haynes and Brian Sesnick have pulled off something truly remarkable here, a powerful evocation of childhood with all of its mysteries and terrors and flights of imaginations and longings, richly textured recreations of Manhattan in the 20s and in the 70s. A magical and intricately plotted quest story that builds to a beautiful climax. Wonderstruck is fun, emotionally potent, and it's a great New York movie. Haynes added, We're so pleased and proud that Wonderstruck has been selected for the centerpiece slot at this year's New York Film Festival. There's no more meaningful place or audience which to share our film that is a tribute to both the history of New York City and to cinema. Mustafa Shakir of The Night Of and Rosewood actress Gabrielle Dennis have joined the season two cast of Marvel's Luke Cage. The show stars Mike Coulter as a titular superhero, while Simone Mizek plays Misty Knight, Lazara Dawson plays Claire Temple, Afri Woodward plays Mariah Dillard, and Theo Rossi plays Shades. Executive producer Joseph Lev said in a statement Wednesday, Mustafa's incredible presence and powers ignites us from our first meeting, and Gabrielle brings the charm and smarts to a very complicated role. Added uh, Marvel's Luke Cage, uh, executive producer and showrunner Chio Hadari Cooker. I can't wait for audiences to see the compelling paces we both put Mustafa and Gabrielle through. From the moment you see each of them on screen, I feel they will be powerful additions to the world of Marvel and Harlem's Luke Cage. The new episodes are set to premiere in 2018. Season 1 is now streaming on Netflix. Lena Headley says her Game of Thrones character, Cersei Lannister, will have some horrible behaviors in Season 7. The 43-year-old British actress said in the July 6th issue of the edit that the Queen Regent will be particularly cruel to a certain character in the fourth season, forthcoming season of the HBO series. Headley said the closing events of Season 6, she lost everything, whatever was good in her life has been erased, and she's a horrible cow to one particular character. It's really quite lonesome. The season 6 finale saw Cersei's last living child, Tommen, played by Dean Charles Chapman, kill himself after Cersei's orchestrated the deaths of his wife, Marjorie Tyro, played by Natalie Dormer, and the High Sparrow, played by Jonathan Price, in an explosion. Haley said of the devious move, I thought that was great. The High Sparrow was yet another man who came along and was like, I'm going to manipulate you, so I think 
her revenge, well, I was like, yes, F you. And she took out Marjorie Tyrell and her low-cut blouse. Game of Thrones will return for a seventh season, July 16th. Haley confirmed in an interview with the New York Times, published Wednesday, that Cersei is not having a good time in the new season. She quipped, apparently winter is coming finally. Game of Thrones released a new season seven trailer featuring Headley in June. The series co-stars Amelia Clark as Daenerys Targaryen, Kit Harington as Jon Snow, Sophie Turner as Sansa Stark, and Macy Williams as Arya Stark. And a related story, Game of Thrones alum Christian Narian channeled his character Holdor in a new commercial for KFC. Christian appears in the ad as a cashier at the fast food restaurant who becomes overwhelmed by a parade of customers who all want to order chicken with a side of fries. Overwhelmed by the hungry mob, Narian is seen repeating chicken with fries, similar to how Holdor would constantly mutter his name on the hit HBO drama. Finally, Narian is able to break away from the same chicken with fries when he begins to proclaim chicken with rice, new meal now available at KFC. The actor was last seen as whole door in season six of Game of Thrones when the character met his end after holding the door for Bran Stark, played by Isaac Hempstead Bright, so he could escape from a pack of whites. Game of Thrones returns to HBO with season seven starting July 16th. And Game of Thrones star Sophie Turner says she is very happy with boyfriend singer Joe Jonas. The 21-year-old British actress opened up about her relationship with the 27-year-old American singer in the August issue of Marie Claire UK. I'm very happy, Turner told the magazine before discussing the downsides of dating a fellow celebrity. She said of public interest in her personal life, you do feel like you're living in a fishbowl. It's frustrating that it's the most mundane thing that makes the news. How boring. Turner and Jonas were first linked in October and were spotted kissing at a King's of Leon concert the next month. The actors discussed the upsides of dating a celebrity in the May issue of In Style. She told the publication, I keep things very private. I found it easier to date someone who understands the industry or is in that world. You realize you're not going to see each other all the time and you don't feel like a jerk when you're like, my publicist says, I can't do this. Turner is known for playing Sansa Stark on the HBO series Game of Thrones. Frozen and Veronica Mars star Kristen Bell has recorded the new song Tell Me How Long for the upcoming documentary Chasing Coral, Netflix set. The nature film was directed by Jeff Olorowski and written by Dan Romer and Teddy Geiger. Bell said in the same Wednesday, I was moved and inspired by Chasing Coral and its message of hope for our planet's future. I feel a responsibility to care for the earth in whatever way I can, and I was honored to lend my voice to the original song. As we strive to make a better world for our children, I hope this film will ignite real action in advancing climate solutions in our global communities. The Sundance Film Festival favorite is to premiere on Netflix and a limited theatrical release on July 14th. New parents George and Amal Clooney stepped out for the first time with their twins this week. The 56-year-old actor and 39-year-old human rights lawyer were spy carrying daughter Ella and son Alexander in bassinets Monday as they deplaned a private jet Monday in Milan, Italy, according to TMZ. People reported George and Ma often visit Lake Como, where the couple had a home. Uh, the pair married in Venice in September 2014 and are set to planning the, to renew their vows on their wedding anniversary this year. So are so closer weekly. Amal and George are even, even planning a welcome party for the twins on their third wedding anniversary when they will also be renewing their vows in front of close friends and family. George and Amal welcome Ellen and Alexander on June 6. Friend and fellow celebrity Randy Gerber said in an interview with Entertainment Tonight in June that the couple are doing well and adjusting to the new roles as parents. The 55-year-old this man said of George, he's so happy right now, just in life in general, and having those kids, you know, it's an incredible feeling for him. He also added, I did see the babies. My wife, Cindy, as in Cindy Crawford, and I went to London and went to the house and spent some time with them. The kids are the perfect mix of George and Amal. I mean, they really are so cute. Christina El Musa got close to her new beau while celebrating the 4th of July this week. The 33-year-old television personality cozied up to businessman Doug Speeding on her boat Tuesday in Newport uh, Beach, California, according to E! News. El Musa were all smiles in a strip bikini as she enjoyed the sunny afternoon with Speeding. The star was seen reclining in Speeding's arm on the boat and also gazing up into the businessman's eyes. So I was told Entertainment Tonight in June, it's new, they've been talking and seeing each other for a couple of weeks. 
the insider added, Christina and him recently reconnected, explained El Musa and Speedy have known each other for 10 years. She dated him before her and Tariq were together. El Musa announced her split from Tariq El Musa, her husband, and Flipper Flop co-star in December after seven years of marriage. The pair confirmed in April that they will continue to star in the HDTV series. El Musa said in the statement, Tariq and I have been working together for a long time and we look forward to continuing to work together on Flipper Flop. Tariq added, from the beginning, HDTV has shown Christina and me tremendous support and we're excited to go out there and flip many more houses for Flipper Flop. El Musa and Tariq share six-year-old daughter Tyler and 22-month-old son Brayden. Actress Meredith Salinger confirmed via Twitter Thursday that she is engaged to comedian actor Patton Oswalt. Salinger captioned a series of sweet photos commemorating the happy occasion. It's official. I'm the luckiest, happiest girl in the universe. I love you at Patton Oswalt. I love you, Alice Oswalt. One snapshot is of Salinger snuggling her fiancé, while a second shows her hand with a beautiful diamond ring on it next to a tiny tiles that spelled out, Will you marry me, Meredith Salinger? A third image is, the, is shown of the actress with Oswalt's eight-year-old daughter, Alice. Oswalt, who tweeted the message was previously married to writer Michelle McNamara from 2005 until her death in April 2016. McNamara died from a combination of a previously undiagnosed heart condition with the use of prescription medication. Reese Witherspoon delighted fans by posing with her lookalike daughter this week. The 41-year-old actress shared a photo with Ava Elizabeth, her 17-year-old daughter, with ex-husband actor Ryan Phillippe while celebrating the 4th of July. She captioned the picture on Instagram to her 10.2 million followers. Happy 4th, y'all. Hashtag golden hour. At Ava Phillippe. Witherspoon's post received more than 620,000 likes. Several people said in the comments that Witherspoon and Ava look more like sisters than mother and daughter. One person wrote, So cute, she looks just like you. Another added, Oh my goodness, y'all look like sisters, so very pretty. Witherspoon followed up by posting a photo of Ava and son's deacon in Tennessee watching a sunset. She wrote, Nights like these, hashtag vacation vibes, hashtag my heart, hashtag postcards from afar. Witherspoon shares Ava and 13 year old deacon with Phillippe and four-year-old Tennessee with husband Jim Thoth. Philippi, who is also dad to six-year-old daughter Kai, said in November that he sometimes gets mistaken as Ava's brother. The 42-year-old actor said on the late, late show with James Corden, one thing that I know my daughter gets embarrassed sometimes by is the fact that I do look so young. I get mistaken for her brother at times, which repulses her. Witherspoon last starred as Madeline McKenzie on the HBO miniseries Big Little Lies. She told E! News in April that she spoke to author Lane Lyanne Moriarty and co-star Nicole Kimmon about the show's potential return. Charlie Weber says he is very happy with girlfriend Lisa Wilde. The 38-year-old actor discussed his romance with the 40-year-old How to Get Away with Murder co-star on Wednesday's episode of the Allegedly with Theo Vaughn and Matthew Cole Weiss podcast. He said of their early relationship, we were great friends and we found ourselves in a position to be more than that, and we did. We spent a lot of time, and I very much enjoyed spending time away from work, so it all just kind of came together like that. Weber confirmed he's very happy with WOW after podcast host Matthew Cole Weiss and Lauren Ash said fans contacted the show to voice their support for the couple. The actor said, I'm very much appreciative because I'm very happy as well. Wiles Rep confirmed to People in June that the actor starred Dane Weber in the summer of 2016. Just Jared reported the couple grew close after splitting from their respective spouses, Paul Adelstein and Giselle Weber, in the spring of 2016. A source said they have been dating under the radar nearly for a year. Weber and Wiles play longtime co-workers Frank Delfino and Bonnie Winterbottom on How to Get Away with Murder. The ABC series co-stars Viola Davis and Billy Brown and will return for a fourth season in the fall. Weber said of on um, allegedly, we're about to start filming. In fact, I sat down yesterday for an initial creative meeting with boss Peter Nowak. I think you're going to see, given how the last season ended, sort of the band break up, so to speak. So you're going to see a lot more people, a lot more isolation. Lauren Conrad and her husband, William Tell, have welcomed their first child together, a baby boy named Liam James Tell. The couple said in a statement to People magazine, we're thrilled to share that we welcome our son Liam James Tell into our family. Mom, dad, and baby are doing well. We're already in love. Liam was born weighing 6 pounds, 14 ounces on Wednesday. Conrad also shared the news on Instagram alongside a photo of a cross-stitch depicting her family. She captioned the image, he's here. We're so excited to welcome Liam James Tell into the world. The Hills and Laguna Beach alum debuted her baby bump in January after announcing that she was pregnant on New Year's Day. Conrad and Tell tied the knot in 2014. Emily Ratatowski says she's often deemed too sexy to work in Hollywood. 
The 26-year-old model and actress said in the August issue of Harper's Bazaar Australia that she loses out on roles because of her appearance. Artakowski told the magazine, There's this thing that happens to me. Oh, she's too sexy. It's like an anti-woman thing that people don't want to work with me because my boobs are too big. She responded, What's wrong with boobs? They're a beautiful feminine thing that needs to be celebrated. Like, who cares? They're big. They're great small. Why should that be an issue? Artakowski shared similar sentiments in an interview with ES Magazine Post published in May 2016. The actress says, it's an interesting paradox. If you're a sexy actress, it's hard to get serious roles. You get offered the same thing that they've seen you in. People are like sheep and they're like, oh, that's what she does well. She also confessed, the truth of the matter is no one wants to hear me talk about this stuff. Definitely not the men who are casting films don't want to hear it, but I just cannot. I'm angry. It's important to me. Ratajkowski came to fame after appearing in Robin Thicke's risque music video for Blurred Lines. She since starred in the movie We Are F Your Friends, and is slated for the films I Feel Pretty and In Darkness. John Stewart is set to co-host ESPN's Sports Center alongside anchor Hannah Storm Friday for the conclusion of the Department of Defense Warrior Games. A Paralympics-style event, Warrior Games, features 256 seriously injured or ill-service members and veterans from all branches of the military competing in a number of sports events including swimming, archery, cycling, and sitting volleyball. Service members and veterans from the United Kingdom and Australia's militaries are also competing. The former Daily Show host said while speaking with the Chicago Tribune, we ask an awful lot of the veterans community. The least we can do is in return is support them when they're home. If a short put falls in the forest, does that make a sound? It'd be nice if it made a sound. The Warrior Games, which began on June 30th and continues until Friday, is taking place at Soldier Field in Chicago. Storm said in a statement about hosting Sports Center with Stewart during the Warrior Games, it is a thrill for me not to just to be a part of the Warrior Games, but also to work with someone who's one of the best known hosts in television industry and such a great talent. I've always been a fan of Stewart's work, and he's so involved and so passionate about this cause. After hosting Sports Center starting at 7 p.m., Stewart will then do a live interview from the event starting at 11 p.m. Actress Lena Dunham is being criticized by an animal shelter for allegedly lying about her former dog, Lambie, which she described as an abusive, aggressive, special needs dog she can no longer handle and had to give away to another shelter. Dunham wrote in an Instagram post on June 21st, A lot of you have been asking about Lambie in these days since he's always been the star of my gram and I've been posting pics of my poodle gr girls. Well, you know, honestly, it's my jam, but this one has been really heartbreaking to talk about, but I feel I have to share that last March... After four years of challenging behavior and aggression that cannot be treated with training or medication or consistent loving dog ownership, Lambie went on to live at an amazing professional facility in Los Angeles. She went on to say that Lambie suffered terrible abuse as a pup that made having him in a typical home environment dangerous to him and others. But now the animal shelter where Dunham adopted the dog in 2013 has spoken out and accused Dunham of lying about the dog. Robert Vasquez told celebra uh, Yahoo Celebrity, we checked the records for Lambie. He was owner surrendered not enough time, so we do not know where she got multiple owners that abused the dogs. Vasquez went on to say that Lambie wasn't crazy when Dunham adopted him. Uh, Vasquez says if Lambie had a bad pass or was abused, do you think Bark would have adopted him to Lena knowing she's a new star and put her or the dog in that situation? We would have told her if the dog had issues. We are no kill sh uh, shelter. We do not lie about the dog's histories because that gets them returned and mentally it's not good for the dogs. Dunham gave Lambie to the Zen Dog and Alternative Dog Training Center that specializes on difficult abused dogs. Zen dog owner Matt Beisner describes Lambie as a hot mess and a train wreck when he arrived, according to the cut. Beisner also said that Lambie was heavily medicated, aggressive, and drinking its own urine. Dunham had complained about Lambie on social media before. She tweeted in 2014, We've had a special needs rescue dog who has bitten me twice under specific circumstances in our own home. He has an amazing trainer. A pink trap house rapper 2 Chains used to promote his latest album, Pretty Girls Like Trap Music, was turned into an HIV-AIDS testing facility. The site located in Fulton County, Georgia, offered free HIV-AIDS testing on July 4th during an event that was attended by more than 300 people, 53 of which were tested, NBC11 in Atlanta reported. 2 Chains partnered with the Fulton County Board of Health, Test Atlanta, and Atlanta AIDS to open the testing site after the rapper used the location to host a church service. 
to Chains Road on Instagram to promote the event alongside a photo of the house. Fulton County Board of Health says they're pulling up today. Come get tested and know your status. By the way, this is free 99. The Pink Trap House has been a popular location for fans who visit the area frequently in order to take photos in front of the structure. The lease is set to expire on the formerly tile Howell Mill House. However, Two Chains management team is set to be considering another extension to keep the Pink Trap House going. Kesha has returned to music with her first single since 2013 titled Praying from her newly announced album Rainbow. Uh, the pop star says in the music video for Praying that begins with Kesha being stranded in the middle of the ocean, if there's a God or whatever, something, somewhere, why have I been abandoned by everyone and everything I have ever known, I've ever loved? Stranded? What is the lesson? What is the point? God, give me a sign or I have to give up. I can't do this anymore. Please just let me die. Being alive hurts too much. The accompanying visuals and lyrics seem to hint at Kesha's ongoing legal battles with her producer Dr. Luke, who originally headed the label she, she assigned to Kimosabi Records. Kesha has been attempting to get free of her contract after she says Dr. Luke raped and abused her. The case reached an apex in March when New York Supreme Court Justice Shirley Kernreich rejected Kesha's amended lawsuit against Dr. Luke. The ruling was similar to one made in April 2016 in which the pop star's claims were dismissed. Dr. Luke says since sued Kesha for defamation as his contract with Sony Music expired, ending his run as the CEO of Kimosabi Records. Kesha sings in the chorus to praying, I hope you're somewhere praying, praying. I hope your soul is changing, changing. I hope you find your peace falling on your knees, praying. The 30-year-old also penned an essay released through Lenny Letter Thursday that details the inspiration behind the song and the lyrics that it deals with abandonment. She wrote, There are so many days, months even, when I didn't want to get out of bed. I spent all day wanting to go to sleep, and then when I did fall asleep, I had a horrible night terrors where I would physically cry and scream through the dark. I was never at peace, night or day, but I dragged myself out of bed, took my emotions to the studio, and made art out of it. And I have never been happier with a body of work as I am with this record. Rainbow will arrive August 11th through RCA and Kimosabi Records. Featured guests will include Eagles of Death Metal and Dolly Parton, who will guest on a cover of her own song, Old Flames Can't Hold a Candle to You, Pitchfork Reports. And finally, a prism letter of rap icon Tupac Shakur addressed to Madonna that details why he ended their relationship has resurfaced. Shakur wrote in the letter that was released by TMZ that is dated January 15, 1995 at 4.30 a.m. For you to be seen with the black man wouldn't in any way jeopardize your career. If anything, it would make you seem that much more open and exciting. He continued, but for me, at least in my previous perception, I felt due to my image, I would be laying down half of the people who made me what I thought I was. I was never meant to hurt you. The letter, which was written as he served time on sexual abuse charges while at the Clinton Correctional Facility in New York, will go up for auction at the Gotta Have Rock and Roll sale between July 19th and through the 28th, said Rolling Stone magazine, who confirmed the note's authenticity. Highlights from the letter include Shakur apologizing to Madonna, asking for her friendship, and several ominous messages. Uh, he said, I offer my friendship once again, this time stronger and focused. If you are still interested, I would like to further discuss this with you, but some of it couldn't wait. I felt compelled to tell you, just in case anything happened to me. Please be careful, Madonna. Everyone is not as honorable as they seem. There are those whose hearts bleed with envy and evil. They would not hesitate hesitate to do you harm. Shakur died on September 13, 1996 after being shot during a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas. And as your entertainment report for Friday, July 7th, 2017, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the answer report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Everyone have a great weekend. Good night, and God bless you all.